G'day guys, welcome back to the truest AFL channel you will find in the United Kingdom, probably. I mean, Drewsy hasn't really been making AFL content this year, so I guess that counts. Anyway, today we are going to be doing another trade period video. Uh, I'm going a little bit early with this one. What I thought would be an interesting exercise to do is do a little bit of a tier maker, ranking all the players that have switched clubs or are about to switch clubs in this year's trade period. I could have waited a couple of days and done it when all the players have switched clubs, but what I've done is included everyone that swapped clubs this this off season, including free agents and trades, of course. And then uh, also I've added in a few players that we expect to move clubs by deadline day. There may be a few that slipped through on deadline day that we didn't see coming. Um, you know, ones that we haven't heard about will probably happen in the last hour or two. I'm sure that will happen, but for now, we're gonna do a bit of an analysis on the ones we know about. What I've done is got us into tier maker, as usual, I use this a lot this year, um, and I've got four categories for uh, categorizing players that are switch clubs. So I've got the top tier players that are guns, the ones that are gonna come in and really add value to the, a team's best 22. I've got key cog as a separate one, a player that's probably maybe there more for for their role or their potential to play a role. Uh, Best 22 is a player that is not gonna really improve their team massively, but again, probably coming in for a role, but maybe it's a lesser important role. Again, as we map this out, it'll become more clear the criteria. And then finally, speculative and depth players, which are twofold. There's players that are switch clubs, maybe because they need some key positional depth or something like that. Or speculative is that perhaps that they're either young and unproven and traded for a low cost, or you know they've had a fair stint at one club and it's time for them to try a new club for a second chance. So to kick off the analysis, I'm going to put one player in each category. So when we consider what is a gun player, I would probably be looking at the top players to move clubs this off season. And to be honest, this one, and then we're gonna sort of learn this from this analysis as well, is that there's not too many top liners actually switching clubs this off season. A lot of clubs just giving second chances or you know filling um, key positional holes that they've got in their list or you know small forward hole, whatever, adding some youth, whatever. But the first one that I would put as a, as a pretty much a top liner is Taylor Adams. You know, he's not necessarily an A-grade midfielder anymore, but even at 30, I think he can add a lot to uh, the City Swans midfield rotation. Obviously with Callum Mills injury, he's uh, he's gonna come in and, and you know obviously be part of that best 22 and probably get a fairly good look at the cold face. And I, I think he's generally someone that it would be surprising if he doesn't improve the this Sydney Swans best 22 as a midfielder. So as, as far as the criteria goes, he's you know one of the best that's uh, switched clubs this season. Key Cog is an interesting one. Uh, who is somebody that I think is a key cog? You know what? I'm actually going to chuck Brody Grundy in here. So Sydney have uh, done well straight off the bat with uh, two players that will improve their team. I, I don't think Brody Grundy really qualifies as a as a gun anymore. I think he's got to reprove that. But I think as a ruckman at that age, if he's given the license as a number one ruck, I think we will see an improved version of Brody Grundy. And I think he is better than simply a best 22 player. Maybe but my personal opinion, but again, this will start to take shape over time. I would chuck Tyler Brockman maybe as a, as a best 22 player. And this one, I think I think is going to be more highly ranked in the squad to justify just being speculative or depth. I think he's going to come in and be seen as a pressure small forward and be given a chance to uh, be in the side by round one. And uh, you know if he misses out, so be it. But I think he becomes you know a fringe twenty to twenty five player, and therefore he qualifies as best twenty two under this criteria. Uh, somebody who is speculative or depth, I probably Nick Caulfield. Okay, you know maybe maybe he does start round one, and maybe I'm not close enough to the situation to give a really good analysis. But he is a player that I don't think has played since twenty twenty one, and by that criteria, he makes him pretty speculative. Uh, he's probably going to take some time to work into that Bulldogs. Uh, back line. I presume he's going to be there as a halfback flanker. So it probably starts in the VFL. Obviously, so the Bulldogs see something there, but it is still speculative by that criteria. Let's chuck in Asava Radaglia. I'm going to say he probably counts as a key cog. Uh, not necessarily that he is so good that he transcends being a simple best 22 player, but I think with Port Adelaide's particular issues in the back half and the fact that he is still a pretty decent player with a with some upside there, I think there is a potential for him to be an important part of that backline mix there that exceeds simply just being a best 22 player. I hope that makes sense. I hope this continues to make sense as I do it over time. Uh, let's go with a another player who's just caught my eye. Speculative slash depth would be Tom Fullerton, who's just joined the Melbourne Footy Club. Obviously, they're looking for some semi-experienced or semi-mature um, ruck forward depth in that team. I don't expect him to play round one. Demons fans, let me know if I'm wrong about that. But, you know, obviously, he's kind of more of a uh, replacement to what Brody Grundy could have been in that team. But, again, it's probably more in the case of 
if there's injuries that take place. And we, we're far from being certain that Tom Fullerton is necessarily going to make it at AFL level. So that's probably why I've got him there. Lockie Schulz, I'll put in the gun category, okay? I think, look, is he as good as Taylor Adams? No, but he probably is more of a surefire thing to really add value to that team, in my opinion, compared to Grundy or Radagalia. Uh, I think maybe it's because I'm West Australian, I see a bit more of Lockie Schulz, but he has, he has potential to be a game breaker. And that's why I think, he probably is in that top echelon of talent of players to move clubs this offseason by virtue of the fact that there isn't that many real top liners moving clubs. So I do think he is in the top category. I think the, the Pies have probably got a bit of a bargain there, to be honest. Paddy Dow, speculative slash depth. You know, he's kind of somewhat lucky that a club is willing to roll the dice on him. He will probably end up at the Saints. This is one that hasn't happened yet, of course, um, but far from being a certainty to really add any value to that list. And therefore, I think it is speculative and probably depth. They are looking for midfield depth. The Saints, I'd really be surprised if he starts round one. Uh, who else have we got here? Um, Burgess is probably depth. You know, he's a really good VFL player over the last couple um, that is returning back to South Australia. Look, if Himmelberg leaves, there's a chance that he does play round one and gets a real crack at it. But I think for the most part, this guy's going to come back as quality depth. Maybe they're looking at the transition period, you know, maybe Taylor Walker obviously leaving and another avenue to go beyond next year, but I, I'd be surprised if he's really in their long-term plans. This is more of a bit of a, a shot on a guy who wants to come play for him for more opportunity. I could be wrong on that, but I think he would, you'd say he's speculative because he doesn't have that same proven AFL form. You know, even a Tyler Brockman who is only 20 years old has a little bit of a resume already. Jack Gunston on talent is probably a gun. You probably put him as gun already. He's a little bit different because the circumstances are a little bit strange. Obviously, Hawthorne, I don't think really sort it out other than to, you know, to bring him back a, like a favorite son, so to speak, of the Hawthorne Footy Club. But this isn't a, a move for them uh, in terms of him being a key cog next year. Again, it's kind of a unique situation there. He, he is going to be best 22 and he is going to be a very good player for them. So I suppose on, on talent, he's a gun and therefore that qualifies Jack Gunston in that category. Um, let's go with Todd Goldstein. I would say best 22. Is he a key cog? Probably not. He's probably a ruckman that are required uh, and he will improve their best 22, but I would probably stop short of saying key cog if that makes any sense. Uh, same thing here with Joel Hamling. Probably going to play games by virtue of the fact that Sydney really needed some key defensive reinforcement and Hamling was the one they got. They missed out on Mackay. He's going to play, but he's not going to be a key cog. We can define key cog differently. You could say that he's a key cog because they really need a key defender, but I can't see him making that much of an impact, if that makes sense. Zerk Thatcher, I will again equally put in best 22. I don't know about key cog. I think Asava is the, the main target there. Zerk Thatcher, obviously, is a South Australian wanting to go home. And, and Port Adelaide do need key back. So I think they're serious about getting Zerk Thatcher. But on talent, he's, he's a solid player. He will improve their back line, but probably not going to be as important I would say, as a Sava radical leader. I hope, again, that makes sense. Tom Dode is probably key cog, okay? He is he is kind of a gun, but again, these are arbitrary terms. But I would say, as a third tall defender, when he eventually comes into the side, I think I'd stop short of saying he's on the same level of talent as the guys in that top tier, to be honest. We're all going to have different opinions there, but, you know, Brisbane setup does require him uh, in, a, in a way. Again, it's replacing Marcus Adams and a, uh, add some tall to medium sort of defensive depth there. But uh, I would say Key Cog is about right for Tom Dode. Who else we got here? Zach Fisher, probably merely best 22. Obviously, forced out of the side of Carlton at times. Obviously, he came back in and played well on, on various flanks. Uh, and at North Melbourne, I think he will be you know, a good sort of ancillary player for them rather than being a key part of what they're doing moving forward. He will, he'll help the team in the same way that Dylan Stevens, wherever I got Dylan Stevens, uh, there he is. I would probably put him in best 22. He does have the potential to be better than that. You know, if I was recruiting Zach Fisher or Dylan Stevens, I think in terms of top end potential, I'm, I'd, be, I'd be picking Stevens. But again, um, because he couldn't find his way into that Sydney team, he probably hasn't proven himself up to be a key cog. Big O and Yuan, uh, you'd have to say speculative and depth. Uh, North Melbourne looking for key defensive prospects, um, or not prospects, but you know established players. He's somewhat established in the sense that he's 22 years old and he's played a game of AFL, but that is still speculative, uh, respectfully. You know, we don't really know too much about him yet. Uh, David Dersma put in best 22. Uh, that's if that happens. Again, there's no guarantee because he is contracted, but uh, you do think that he would be a, an important part 
of um, getting the Zerk Thatcher deal done. And if Port Adelaide is serious about that, they're going to have to offer him up. So could he have the potential to be key cog? Sure. But, you know, I, I think his football has fallen away a little bit in recent times and he could prove to be, well, he could prove to be a gun. I think there's talent there for sure. But uh, trying to be relatively grounded with some of these uh, rankings here. Uh, Jay Gresham, again, has the potential to be a key cog. I'm probably going to put him in best 22, though. Um, purely because of the fact that, uh, again, he can be a little bit unreliable, a little bit, if that's the right word, a little bit flaky. I don't know if what the term is for Jack, uh, Jack, Jade Gresham, sorry. But on his day, he is also fantastic. So I think he has gun potential, but if you're at the free agency part of your career and you are still a little bit inconsistent, it's probably a sign that you're not really going to necessarily be better at the new club. Um, I can't think of too many examples of players who got to 26 and then exploded at the new club. Sometimes that happens at about 21, 22. Uh, but Jay Gresham, I think, is, is past that point. Mario Chol, a best 22 player. He's going to come in and get opportunity for Hawthorne, obviously losing Kaczynski and uh, add some support. I uh, don't think he's a key cog by any stretch, but has the potential to be a 30 to 40 goal player in the AFL. So I'd say that. Ben Mackay, key cog. I think this guy, again, on talent, isn't necessarily super compelling, super convincing. In fact, sometimes he looks a little lackluster, but nonetheless, you know, he was given a 750000 whatever it was, dollar contract for a reason, and that is because Essendon places a huge importance on him in their back line. So a little bit more high profile than Zerk Thatcher, who is a little bit of a bonus on top of Asava Radaglia, if that makes sense. Ben Mackay, this is not necessarily saying he is that much better than Zerk Thatcher, if at all, but he is more proven. And uh, and like I said, the price tag does suggest key cog for me. Shane McAdam simply is best 22. Uh, I think there's no chance that he moves to Melbourne unless there's a bit of a promise that he will be in their best 22 forward mix. Um, obviously looking for other avenues to go, a little bit of depth. They need some tools naturally, but Shane McAdam as a small forward is going to start in their team in round one, I would imagine, um, without being a key cog in that team. You know, he'd be well behind Fritsch. He'd be well behind Cozzy Pickett, to be honest. But still a very handy player. So he could, you know, have an out-of-the-box season and really justify the trade. Uh, but at the very least, I'd say he's best 22. Massimo D'Ambrosio, uh, speculative slash depth, okay? Mid-season rookie pickup. Um, shows some promise, shows some AFL traits for sure, but out of favor at Essendon and, um, and was only offered a one-year deal. So at the end of the day, like I'm, I don't think he's a lock-in for best 22 at Hawthorne. Maybe he starts round one, but he could lose that spot pretty quickly. By comparison to someone like a Brockman, I think there is a, there's a golf in talent there for a start and also a slight golf in prospects to play past round one. Just my own personal opinion. But at the end of the day, this whole thing is my opinion. So Soldo and Sweet, I think, will both consider best 22 players. I don't think, I think both of them exceed speculative and both of them were recruited to reinforce Port Adelaide's Best 22. I don't think Jordan Sweet, I said this in a previous video, is moving clubs to Port Adelaide simply to be a backup in his home state. That's not my read of the situation. And the same thing with Soldo. They both want to be number one ruck. It's going to be weird trying to see them balance both in their best 22, but I'd imagine both come in as best 22 players. James Harms is weird. Uh, probably best 22. But again, he's kind of depth as well. Like, I don't actually really know the Bulldogs' plans for him. Is he going to be a fringe emergency every week kind of player? I'm thinking no, because at Melbourne, he was that already, and he sought a move. Melbourne told him to explore his options, and uh, he sought a move to the Bulldogs. So there's probably a little bit more guarantee of some game time, and he is a decent player, so he probably qualifies as that. Liam Henry, this one's tough because he's one of the younger ones to switch clubs in this offseason. Former top 10 pick, really started to make a name for himself in the AFL. Well, at least maybe that's a bit rich, but he certainly made a strong case for being best 22 at Fremantle this year. That's probably fair. So I'll say best 22 with the potential to be a key cog. I think there is real upside there, but um, it's going to take him a few years to reach that potential. So a little bit of an iffy one when you compare players from different timelines in their in their career. It's a little bit apples and oranges sometimes. But Himmelberg, I think with with GWS's uh, forward line uh, mix, you know they're still looking. That's still like a work in progress, so to speak. We saw some really good form from Hogan this year, and Riccardi at times looked decent. But I'd imagine there's the only chance that Himmelberg moves clubs to play in the best 22 every week. So I'd say um, with his brother probably playing a bit more back, Himmelberg comes in in his best 22. And uh, yeah, that's starting to be a fat section of the best 22 there. We'll get into that in a minute. Elijah Hollands probably goes into depth, to be honest. Uh, I think this is kind of a case, as I was saying, of Gold Coast 
probably secretly wanting this move to happen more so than Carlton. I mean, I think there is some talent there, but he has only played, you know, a half a dozen to a dozen games at AFL level, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, couldn't quite crack a gig, a regular gig in that Gold Coast team. And do we see him walking in and being around one starter for Carlton? Probably not. So it feels a little bit harsh because I think there is some talent there, but that's that's the way I read it. Probably depth at this stage. And Jacob Kaczynski, this one is a tough one because, uh, you know, he didn't really crack a game at uh, Hawthorne, but at Richmond, he could conceivably be a best 22 player or at least someone they would put into their team in round one as a means of investment into a young key forward. I would still say speculative though. So he's probably not depth, but he's speculative because um, he's far from proven AFL level. I hope I've been consistent with this analysis. It's not actually a really simple analysis to do, um, but as always, I welcome your feedback as to what you would do differently because we are going to see this differently. So to summarize, I, I say there's three genuine gun players that have switched clubs this offseason, and that is uh, Taylor Adams, Lockie Shules, and Jack Gunston to different extents. You know, I'd say on talent, Jack Gunston's the best of the three. Taylor Adams, are probably close second, and Schultz behind those two. Uh, but in terms of impact for his club, I think Schultz is, is going to do some damage in a very, very good Collingwood side. The key cogs, uh, purely because I think the importance they place for their new club, transcend being a simple best 22 player. I've got four of them. Asava Radagalia, Brody Grundy, Tom Doday, uh, who of course is going to be injured for half a season, but still, this is a longer term view. And Ben Mackay, the best 22 players. I'm not going to name them all. We've been through it, but you can see that a fat chunk of the players that are switching clubs this season are kind of just plugging holes in different teams' best 22s uh, to different extents. Um, some have more potential to leap into other categories than others, and some maybe I've overrated even. And then you've got a whole stack of more speculative types switching clubs as well, uh, more likely to be depth in various cases. Players getting a second chance or players that are just wholly unproven um, that have not proven to be best 22 at their own club, let alone the club they're going to. So anyway, guys, that is uh, my take on the players that are going to switch clubs this season or that have switched clubs. As always, welcome your feedback. I feel like this one's going to cop some criticism because we all rate, um, rate players differently. And of course, when you're coming up with your own categories to begin with, you know, this is where it gets a little bit messy. But I've had a crack and obviously welcome your feedback in the comments section below. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.